Welcome to the program. This is the AM News. Details now. The newly elected flag bearer of the People's National Convention, that is the PNC, Bernard Mona, has pledged to prioritize listening to the concerns of Ghanaians and fighting for their cause as president. He made this announcement after securing a landslide victory with 1,138 votes in the party's primaries, defeating his opponent, David Apasara. There is more in this report. Speaking at his victory, Mr. Mona called on his key contender and incumbent chairman, David Apacera, to join hands for the battle ahead to help the party win power. This victory is not the end. It is the beginning. The real work starts now. Ghanaians are fed up with the MPP and the NDC musical chess. PNC under the leadership of Bernard Ambatala Mona, will change the status quo and break the genes and put smiles on the faces of all Ghanaians. <laughs> to my competitor, the Honorable David Apasara, in this just ended National Delegates Congress, I call on you to join me as we work to address the challenges ahead. The challenges ahead do not take any side. Hence, I call on you. All party members and all those who separated from us to quickly join ranks with the PNC and the BAM for Change agenda. <laughs> Let us come together, put aside our differences and build a brighter future for all. The PNC Congress, which was initially scheduled to start at 9 a.m., faced delays due to an injunction filed by David Apaceres Camp. Some party activists were incensed by the development at the end of the presidential primaries, creating tensions at the Congress. <laughs> Agents for various aspirants challenged the results declared by the Electoral Commission. <laughs> Flag bearer of the opposition National Democratic Congress has as a part of his tour of the Bono East region, reiterated his party's commitment towards scrapping the betting tax when voted into office. In his address to party faithfuls in Inkwabing in the Inkranza South constituency, Mr. Mahama, however, cautioned the youth to use their winning bonuses wisely and not to waste the monies on irrelevant ventures. Anasabit has more in this report. <laughs> Throughout his tour of the Bono East Enclave, the NDC flag bearer John Dramani Mahama highlighted key policies in the NDC 2024 Reset in Ghana Manifesto. One of those messages that resonated well with the people, particularly the youth, is his promise of scrapping the betting tax. Betting tax. You be here for you. Mamoto bet, you we will be a buying and it will be a also. The announcement, which was warmly welcomed by the teeming youth here in the Nkranga municipality, where the first lady, Mrs. Modina Mahama, hailed from, was, however, met with this important advice. As you may say, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. Eh, Mamma Falco, yeah, life, 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 more fine out the park, Miss Ramon. In addition to the abolishment of the betting tax, the former president also mentioned that the e levy will be scrapped to bring relief to users of mobile money platforms. 
phone echo now to add there we be the mobile phone next year 1.5% tax are abide you know you be here for her send her there you enjoy with her at least the unemployed youth who are into betting will now heave a sigh of relief as they will now enjoy their winning bonuses without paying a dime out of it as tax and as it join us in other stories, former President John Dramani Mahama has revealed that the long-standing feud between the NDC and the Atebubu Traditional Council has been resolved. It would be recalled that the NDC MP for the area, Sanjananja, has, banned, has been banned from campaigning in the area over some derogatory comments allegedly made against the Queen Mother of Atebubu Traditional Council prior to the 2016 election. Mr. Mahama was thankful to the authorities and assured them that his government would help address the socio-economic challenges of the people. And I submit again. The Atiwamantin Traditional Council prior to the 2016 general elections placed a ban on the then Member of Parliament for the area, Sanja Nanja, over some comments made by the MP on the local radio station deemed as derogatory to the Queen Mother of the area. The prolonged feud between the NDC candidate and the traditional authorities contributed to the MP's loss of the 2016 parliamentary polls. Even though the famous NDC candidate won the 2020 elections convincingly, there were still cracks between the NDC and the traditional authorities in the area until Mr. John Dramani Mahama in his recent visit to the area disclosed that the long-standing beef between the two factions have been resolved for the growth of the Atewa Mountain constituency and the country at large. <laughs> Ni Ameka and the Enkabum Asem. Yes, Enkabum Emma Ekudim De Na Minim Se Emre Chemu Na and Sem Sem Kakra Eba Yani Nananum Tem. But a Yemi De A Yemi Ahuahua Se Enne Yani Nanan Makabum. I just say Na Yaba Hong or Him Pong and Dr. Siama. Why yet to send me New Akitwa? I just said, Meneno, Yen Tim, a ye, and see, me person, Obia, who said, and near Yaka say, and this in a table, Yayaba, ah, and Yayaba, a Sembia, and the young Tim, and see, Mujidia, say, Yaka, boom, we dear, na and see, I say, be a Juma, na your two are banner, your better, my JM. Na minya ketwa or no sujina on ha sanya nanja mo MP no mato abano so amano. The NDC flag bearer admonished the people to vote for the NDC in both parliamentary and presidential elections to help attract the needed development to the area. Na oche se mi ye gunje ni a mi ye a table vote this year. E juma e juma ye be ye oha. Maybe a man penya, Mempesa Mode or Sunobabia Beba Bedimichi, and Timis Ramo, or Jain and then a bananam, or Sunon and a bananam, or Jain and then or Sunoba and Nam, and Timis Ramo, Moyame President, Mebana or Dimichino, Ah, Menene Koye Juma Amamono, Montuaba and Mano, no so, Na on Dimichi, Na Yakoye Juma Mamo. He accused the NPP of failing to execute his campaign promises and asked that the next NDC government will help bring relief to the people. the two new oil wells and the de Ah, hundred thousand barrels of oil I just said uh, uh, Sika, if you are man or neighbor, and also Monty Mia and Chesso, ain't he Nina Elgo? Ain't he, yes, eh, Monkot Sans and Namon Jemahome? If he said, Baby Amunim, dear, Ebedruno, Medruho, 
Muni Ajimbia, Modebeka, and say Monkajemo Ahome, na NDC, MBJ, near San Pejagana, Nagana, and Fanny to my Penfra. And a Sabbath, join news. Moving on, member of the National Media Commission and senior lecturer at the Simon Diodombo University of Business and Integrated Development Studies, Professor Africanus Diodong, is urging journalists to move away from protocol journalism, which mostly feed electorates with speeches from so-called big men, which are without critical interpretation of campaign events and messages that they try to influence the press with. He noted that critical interpretation and analysis differentiate outstanding media men and women from their peers. Professor Africanus made a statement at the meeting Upper West Region's GJA Awards in WA and join news Upper West Regional Correspondent Rafiq Salam reports. The Ghana Journalist Association 2023 Best Journalist Awards for the Upper West Region brought together major stakeholders in the media space in the country to award journalists who have excelled in the previous year in their field of work. Two senior journalists who are on retirement were also given citations for their contributions to the development of the media in the region. It was held on the team Sustaining Ghana's Democracy before, during, and after the 2024 elections, the role of peace journalism. Member of the National Media Commission and senior lecturer at the Simon Diono Number University of Business and Integrated Development Studies, Professor Africa Nuziedong, who was the keynote speaker, underscored the important role played by the media in the country and has therefore urged for them to be empowered to perform their mandatory tasks. It is high time that journalists shifted from protocol journalism, which mostly feeds on electorates with speeches from big so-called big men without critical interpretations of campaign events and such messages that they try to influence the press or the public with. It must be noted that critical and analytical stories, and above all, investigative pieces, differentiate outstanding media men and women from their peers. Vice Chairman of the GJA in the Upper West Region, Sedu Ibrahim Bamanjo, expressed worry over the low number of members of the association calling on the GJA to have the ante to get more members into their fold. It is sad to relate how the regional branch of Ghana General Association here is often called upon to either meditate, mediate, or call airy members to order, only for the regional association executives to step in and realize that the affected person or persons is or are not registered members of the association, let alone being in good standing order. Now, Chairman, in the Upper West Region here, members in good standing are not more than 12 on the last count, with a plethora of many, plethora of uh, media, media houses. It is my belief that if membership registration process is strengthened and boosted by the National Secretariat, as said earlier, the narrative will change and bring up many more members on board the Ghana Journalist Association. Our Pakistan Minister, Stephen Yakubu, in a speech read on his behalf by Chief Director at the Apawas Regional Coordinating Council, Peter M. Mala urged the media to play their war job role effectively to ensure peaceful polls in the 2024 general elections. Elections are tests of the strength of our democratic institutions, and the media must ensure that this process is conducted with transparency, fairness, and integrity. It is through the media's vigilance that the public can have confidence in the electoral process and the outcomes it produces. National organizer of the GJA, Dominic Horosi, called on security agencies and the judiciary to work assiduously to protect the rights of journalists in the country. The, the judiciary, the security services, particularly the Ghana Police Service, must ensure the safety of journalists in this tension-packed electioneering period. Let me also indicate, however, that the media must aim for fairness, impartiality, and accuracy 
in reporting while avoiding sensationalism in the run-up to the 2024 elections. The ceremony was chaired by the Paramount Chief of the Nandam Tlarusna area, now Professor Edmond Dilechiri the Ave. The media must inform and educate the electorate to enable them to make, a good, to make good choices. The media must also refrain from sowing seeds of discord, particularly among political opponents. Sometimes, even when there is no problem, some journalists and media houses would deliberately light the fire to set people and political parties ablaze. The event was organized by the GJA in partnership with USAID, Feed the Future Policy Link. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wa. Rafik Salam also emerged as the overall journalist of the year in that awards um, event. But in other stories, Multimedia Group has won big at the 35th Chartered Institute of Marketing Performance Awards Night. The group swept three awards, including Media Group of the Year, Online Portal of the Year for My Joy Online, and Radio of the Radio Program of the Year for Asempa FM's Eco Season Show. Here are some highlights. The awards, which has become the standard for measuring marketing excellence in Ghana, but all those who matter in the corporate space together at the Plash Labadi Beach Hotel. Multimedia Group on that night won all the awards when it comes to the media space. Here is the announcement that preceded the awards presentation for that night. Media Organization of the Year 2023. The winner of this award is Multimedia Ghana Limited. Congratulations to you. Multimedia Ghana Limited. Please, let's go this way and smile what it is. Are there faces we know? Yes, we do. Congratulations to you, Multimedia Ghana Limited. You are the media organization of the year 2023, the year under review. God bless you. Keep winning and keep shining. The online news portal of the year 2023 goes to my joy online or access the youtube channel for video on demand and live streaming of joy news ghana's first and only 24-hour news channel listen to live radio. ladies and gentlemen my joy online is the online news portal of the year 2023 and there they come again let's smile Thanks for doing us the good job bringing the news closer to us everywhere. Also, the radio program of the year went to a Sempai FM show, Eko Sising. Meanwhile, Imano Jive news special feature on the plight of two disabled students at the University of Ghana won the Presidential Special Award. Congratulations to all of you, Miss Esther Boydou, Miss Felicity Ajure, and of course, our journalist, Mr. Emmanuel Kwashi Jiveno, went it's all out to break the story for the world to see. We love you three, and we will continue to pray and support you as well. God bless you, and God bless you, and God bless you. The National Science and Masks program put together by Primetime Limited, which is also heavily partnered by Multimedia Group, won the TV program of the year. The overall marketing company of the year went to MTA in Ghana. In later development, the managing director of Labadi Beach Hotel, David Duaf, was a judge, the marketing man of the year at the CMG Awards night. Mr. Duaf dedicated the award to the staff and workers of the hotel. These accolades are not only a testament to individual efforts, but also a reflection of the collective dedication innovation and teamwork that drive success in our various industries. Managing Director of Primetime Limited, Nane Kwame Sabunsu, was also adjudged the Marketing Woman of the Year. This is what she had to say after the award. This award means the world to me. 
not only to me, but to my family as well. Because Prime Time is a family uh, business, and my father started the National Science and Maths Quiz, and I have been running it since 2013. He didn't win Marketing Man, Man of the Year for the program. So for it to materialize, for, for him to see this kind of recognition given to me in his lifetime, it's, it's a great thing for him to, he, in fact, when, when I got the message, I was in shock and he was excited. He was over the moon. Congratulations to all the winners at the 35th CIMG Marketing Performance Award. Like I earlier mentioned, let me bring you that story of where um, Joy News Upper West Regional Correspondent Rafiq Salam had been adjudged as the best journalist in the Upper West Region. He beat seven other journalists in the region to win that award. And apart from being the overall winner, he also won the best health reporter in the region. In 2018, Rafiq Salam was adjudged the best journalist in feature stories in the northern sector of the country. Here are some excerpts. Having bagged two citations in the first and second quarter of the year from the Upper West Regional Hospital and the Upper West Regional Health Directorate, recognizing the significant contribution and impact he has brought to the sector through his reportage, it was therefore not surprising when he was adjudged the best Ghana Journalist Association's best health reporter in the region. In March 2023, when doctors at the Wild West District Hospital were conducting surgeries using malfunctioning lamp, it was the report of Rafiq Salam that brought the situation to the attention of the public, eliciting support from the Edward Boache Trust Fund. The trust came to the aid of the hospital, doling out 35,000 Ghana CDs, enabling the hospital to buy two lamps. I did two stories. Uh, one has to do with uh, Memona. Remember the story that I did uh, about Memona when she left school and then uh, have to, was looking for 50 Ghana cities to enable her to pay for her, her WASI exam. And then we followed the story, and then she got back to school. She was not able to make it to the tertiary level. But the people who were supporting her from the UK, and then also the former what High Court judge, uh, has to take her to a fashion uh, shop because she wanted to be a fashion designer. And then she's now uh, come out as a fashion designer with excellence. This award undoubtedly goes to the man. Rafiq Salam. Rafiq wow. wow. Salam once again sharing the glory with his, with his beautiful wife. This is a woman who has the patience to allow him to. The late Rafiq Salam shared his thoughts on the awards. Comes along with a lot of responsibility. That clearly means that I have to uh, improve on a lot and also. Uh, getting more voices of the people, the challenges that people are facing, and then also uh, for the development uh, of the region. So I'm highly uh, elated uh, for this. And I also want to thank uh, the multimedia group for the platform giving me the team uh, in Wa, uh, Asalat, Dan, and then also uh, Lutuf uh, for being uh, the backbone that supported me uh, over the years to do all the things that I'm doing. And also not forgetting of my lovely princess, my wife, uh, who sometimes I have to wake up uh, deep in the night to do voiceovers for me. So I want to thank everybody uh, for the support and the encouragement uh, uh, for this day. There were seven awards for seven other journalists that included Ibrahim Wangara of TV3, Lydia Dalenton of Ghanaian Times, and Philip Tenzu. There were also citations for Bajin Pobia of GNA and Ivan Awudu Domasa for their contribution in the media space in the country. The day actually belonged to Rafiq Salam and the multimedia group, having in 2018 won the SNV Voice for Change Best Feature Story for the northern sector of the country. Up next is Business Update. Welcome to our Business Update. And on our first story, Regional Director of Cuts International, Apia Kusi Abdomako, is urging cement manufacturers to seek legal redress from the Supreme Court following the passage of the LI seeking to regulate prices of cement. Speaking on Business Life, Mr. Adomako said the Trade Ministry's approach was wrong and far from protecting consumers. If the minister is bent on protecting consumers and businesses in Ghana, the best approach that the minister could have used is to pursue the consumer protection law this consumer protection law has been in 
uh, with the ministry for the past 19 years. Honorable Katie Hammond came to inherit the draft bill and has not done anything about it. And look at how he was so keen in getting this ally done. So you said you are protecting consumers in getting a better price. I think the minister is getting it wrong. I would say that he should rather pursue the consumer protection law, pursue the competition and fair trade practices bill. These two laws are the best antidote to every sector we have in this country. Even on the, leg on the legality of the law is also an issue. Because when you look at the, the provisions in the GSA Act, which mandates the minister to go to parliament to pass uh, with an ally, the issue of pricing is not included in the work uh, within the, the, the that subsection, I think section 80 of the GSA Act. And so if people go to Supreme Court, the Supreme Court can easily uh, I mean, uh, nullify the whole ally that, that it is, it is rooted, it's not rooted in law because the work of Ghana Standard Authority does not include price regulations. Standard mm -hmm. authorities are there for quality and technical specifications and standards, not, price, not pricing. So uh, the law itself is uh, even wrong. And I urge members of the industry to go to Supreme Court to challenge its validity. Well, the Ghana Cocoa Board says the new cocoa crop season will be opened with its proposed self-financing plan without the usual syndicated loan facilities. Finance Minister Dr. Amin Adam earlier indicated that the government would be seeking external funding to support the cocoa sector. But Chief Executive Officer of Cocoa Board, Joseph Wahin Eidu, says the board will be combining the new purchasing regime with loan syndications if necessary in anticipation of an effective implementation of this self-financing transition. I don't think there's anything wrong with, um, you know, introducing a new thing. But once you have an existing model, you can only combine that model with a new one. And I believe that um, if it works, then Ghana will go with that model uh, going forward. Um, we've already tried it during the last crop season from June up to the end of August. That was the model that we're using to buy cocoa and then ship. It has worked. But we want to scale it. So even as we may be going for, um, you know, loan. But when you talk about syndication, it's like going to borrow. Oh, up next, we serve you our currency market for the day. And that's it for uh, our business updates. Uh, handing over back to Sweetie Abochi. And that's how we're wrapping up for the AM News on the AM Show. Coming up next is our news review segment. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back in a different.